So you're wondering how professional athletes make their money or how you can make money as a professional athlete. Well, in this video, I'm gonna be sharing how you can capitalize and monetize your God-given talents through sports. So if this is something that you're interested in, then you're gonna to wanna to keep watching. What's up guys, my name is Cindy. For those of you who don't know me, I'm a professional track and field athlete. I tend to get asked questions a lot about how I make my money. People always say, what do you do for a living? Or how are you able to support yourself? So in this video, I wanted to discuss the different ways that we make money and just the ways that if you are aspiring to do this as a career, how you can do that and just the different ways that help us to live this lifestyle and use our gifts to monetize our lives. If you haven't yet, consider subscribing because on this channel, I like to discuss things with my husband, John, and we make a lot of videos. I like to talk about track and field. I like to talk about fitness and how to live a healthy lifestyle. So if this is something that you're interested in, you're gonna wanna subscribe for more weekly content. So the first way that athletes make money is through a shoe contract. It's easiest to receive a shoe contract through an agent. So for instance, I have an agent who speaks on my behalf to different people, different shoe companies. At least when I was trying to get um, a contract, he spoke on my behalf to different shoe companies and he made sure to make me sound as good as possible. Um, he definitely was able to negotiate different prices and he was able to just get me um, the contract that I have today. So that's really helpful to have somebody else help you because in this game or in this sport, it's really hard to do on your own, if I'm being quite honest. So definitely having an agent is one of the ways to start getting money and just start building that base. One of the easiest ways to start getting looked at by different shoe companies and receiving a contract is by running really well at a young age. So in your teenage years, you can start running well as young as teenage years. I started running well when I was at the university. So I ran for Michigan, University of Michigan, and I ran so well there that I got offered a shoe contract after my career was completed. So the better that you do as a college or younger athlete, the more opportunities you'll have as a pro athlete. So this looks like setting records, running fast times, being consistent with your times. Cause people like to see, they don't like to see one hit wonders. Shoe companies really wanna make sure that if they are giving you money for a long time period, that you're gonna be able to show up time and time again. You're gonna be able to make teams. You're gonna be able to, you know, show off their shoes at professional championships because that's what makes them money. So whatever's gonna help them make money is gonna also help you make money. So that's something that really helps is just running well, being really, really good at what you do. Some athletes will be very versatile, so they'll have multiple events that they'll do, but people like me who just specialize in one event, you have to have a certain times that's gonna help you get to that level. So when I was at university, I ran really well and I ran some of the top times in the world, which helped me get the shoe contract I had early in my career. So definitely being really good at one event or being good at some events, but being able to do more events will help you in terms of getting a contract for a shoe company. Usually shoe contracts can last anywhere from two to seven years, depending on your age, when you come out, um, how many more years you might have in your career, all that stuff. So younger athletes might have longer contracts, older athletes who are just receiving a new contract might have a shorter one. It all just depends, but it definitely can range. So it really is like a salary. So for those of you who think, you know, we just get money here and there, it really is a salary. Like you're signing a contract where you're getting that money to, like two times a year. At least for me, I get my money two times a year. So I get half of it like around summertime and I get the other half in like the run autumn, like during that time frame. So, and this is not to say that every athlete's gonna have the same setup. I just know for me personally, that's what it looks like. So the second way that athletes can make money is through prize money. So we have different championships. We have world championships, Olympics. We have all these big meets, but between those meets, we also have diamond league meets. We have world challenges, world tours. There's like there's these circuits that are set up for us as athletes to go and get a lot of racing in. So these happen in Europe. These happen in the US. These happen all over the world, but typically Europe is where like a lot of the meets reside. And so there, the better you do, the more money you're gonna make typically. Races that pay the most are Diamond League races, World Challenge Gold meets, a few other big meets like that. There's also smaller meets that will pay as well. Some meets don't always have prize money. However, some meets are willing to pay for your flight and accommodation. And I think that's just as good sometimes because for instance, sometimes I'm in Europe for so long, but I still need to race because if I don't, I'll get flat. So sometimes I'll go to those meets that just pay for my accommodation and my flight just to get another race in. And essentially that helps me to run 
faster in the bigger races so that I make more money there. So sometimes you wanna go to the little races too, even if they aren't paying prize money, because those races will set you up for bigger ones that will pay you the prize money that you want. So that's kind of how that works. We all get prize money depending on how well we're doing at those meets and what that looks like for each athlete. That's why most people want to get into those bigger meets because they then can make more money from them. In addition to prize money, athletes can also receive appearance fees. So depending on how good you are, the meets really want you to come depending on how well you did. For instance, if you have a medal, um, you, you had a really, really good year the year before with really good times, those meets want you to come because it helps their fans get excited and it helps them generate more um, of an audience to come watch. So a meet may not have any prize, but they will have appearance fees. And that also is something that motivates athletes to go to those meets as well. Not only do we get prize, we also can get appearance fees, which is also called promo fees, all that stuff. And those also help give us an income as well. So another way that athletes can make their money in sport is through bonuses. So depending on the athlete, I, for instance, have bonuses within my contract that give me the ability to make more money. For instance, if I run a certain time, so there's time bonuses, there's medal bonuses, there's how you place in the world bonuses. So at the end of the year, if you place like top 10 in the world, you get a little bit of bonus for how high you place. There's record bonuses. If I break a certain record or I break the national record, for instance, I can get a bonus. And so this is just an incentive, an incentive for some athletes to run faster. If they don't have like a huge shoe contract, for instance, some shoe companies will make will give the athlete a smaller contract but they'll give them a lot of bonuses so essentially those athletes may be making more money through those bonuses not necessarily their contract so it all just depends on the person like i said especially in track and field um people's incomes vary so much not everybody's making money so some people might be running track just for the fun of it actually don't have any money at all and some people are making like a lot of money it can vary the variation in how much people make is so so different but I will say that bonuses are a really nice motivator to run fast because the faster you run, the more those bonuses start to add up and that helps you save up for the future after sport is done. Because as we all know, this is not gonna last forever. So the fifth way that athletes can make money is through their federation. So depending on how good an athlete can be, the federation, so the US Federation, the UK Federation, the athlete's country can support them as well. So some people get more money from their countries. Some countries set up a thing where athletes who need support can get not only just money, but like massages or support for medical and all these different things. It's also very helpful for athletes who might not have shoe companies because if they don't have a contract through their shoe company, they at least can have money through their federation. This is just another way that athletes get funded and that they're able to make a living off of this so that is also something that can help in the long run because yeah we're all trying to find different streams of income and that is another one the last way that athletes can make money is through their name image and likeness so this is actually something that is new for the collegiate athletes so athletes who run at university can now use their platforms on social media or their brands to make money and this is not something that used to be possible because it was like an ncaa violation but athletes now can make money just off of their name who they are um they can use their name to work with brands. So working with brands is another way that athletes make, can make money. Some athletes like myself make content just like this where you can use your platforms and you can get money through AdSense or through monetization or just the, the brands themselves will pay you to talk about their stuff or um, to promote their stuff. So as a fitness content creator myself, I will work with different brands like protein and supplements and fitness equipment type stuff and that is also another way that you can make money so you can definitely use a brand it's really really good to capitalize on making a name for yourself at this point in your career because sports are not forever and a lot of eyeballs are on you at this point of your life and if you have the ability to use that and capitalize on that then long term when you are done it's going to set you up really really well for success and it's really going to help you so that's something that i am trying to do myself building my brand working on things that help me make money and just like this content creation journey is something that helps me share with you guys how our lives are. There's just plenty of ways that we can make money as athletes and it's really, really helpful to have different streams and different ways to do that because like I said, it's not forever. That is pretty much how athletes make money. We have a lot of different ways. We're not just out here 
you know, having fun and enjoying working out all the time. Like I love working out, don't get me wrong, but I'm also making money from doing it. So it definitely helps bring in an income. And I'm really happy that I can use my God-given gifts to make money at the moment. I love it. And if you guys have any questions about this topic or anything else you want to know about this, definitely leave them down in the comments below. And let me know if you guys want a part two where I can talk about how to make an LLC, a business account, and what it looks like to save up and different ways that you can invest your money so that later on in life you're set up for success. Um, because that's something I'm working through right now as I'm in the middle of my career. So I hope you guys liked this. And if you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe down below. And I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.